creating fully textured 3D assets for high quality real-time applications and games can easily take up to two weeks. Bigger productions can include thousands of different objects that are used for the construction of rich 3D scenes and environments. A typical production workflow for a 3D asset starts with the creation of the high polygon asset, followed by a manual retopology, a UV unwrap of the retopologized low poly version, the baking process to transfer shading detail and data required for texturing from the high poly to the low poly, the texturing of the low polygon version, and then finally the optimization of the finished low poly asset. Many different tools and artists are involved in the process, and it's all too common to go back and forth between UV wrapping, baking, and adjusting the topology of the low polygon asset. In this video, we're showcasing our real-time ready workflow. This revolutionary workflow allows artists to focus on the creative part and introduces massive cost savings by reducing the production time from several weeks to less than 30 minutes. In this example, we're gonna take you through the entire process of taking a few public domain assets that we've assembled together and kit bashed together. And we're gonna take all of that, which is gonna be uh, pretty high poly, and we're gonna take that and create a game ready asset uh, very quickly and bring that into Substance Painter and texture it. So we can see here's the assets that we use were just two assets that are public domain. So first is this skull and second is this gravestone that was uh, done with photogrammetry. So um, we're going to use these two assets and we've already assembled them into uh, a little uh, diorama of the gravestone with skulls around it. And also I put a little dirt pile in there as well to fill in some of the gaps between the skulls. Um, so we have this and what we're going to do is show you a couple settings. So uh, to remesh this, so the first settings are in this remesh tab and normally with an asset like this, something that get placed around quite a bit in an environment, uh, we're going to go for a little bit lower poly count. So let's say uh, we'll try 6,000 triangles first and see how that goes. Uh, and everything else will keep the same. Uh, UVs will use the automatic and clipping plane. Let's add a clipping plane in because I have this plane here and I did the bumps. Let's clip some of that out. So I'm going to create a clipping plane. I'm just going to raise it up just a little bit. And everything above the clipping paint plane will pre be preserved and remeshed and everything below it will be ignored and deleted. So we have the clipping plane set up. And now we just need to set up what we're going to export and where to. So we have bake output. I already have uh, an output path set up. So here we go, there's an output path and then the name, I just named it T underscore real time ready and then underscore texture type. So it's gonna be this right here and then underscore color or normal or whatever textures we export. And we can always add other uh, output names right here if we want to bring those in depending on what your needs are. So we're going to export out a 2048 by 2048 with two times super sampling and the textures that we need because we're going to Substance Painter we're going to go ahead and bake out all these textures here. Object space normal, tangent space normal, uh, ambient occlusion, custom material textures which will bake out the photogrammetry texture that's already on here. And you know it does have lighting in it and some other issues that we wouldn't want, uh, but maybe there's some reference in there that we could pull or we could use this in some way. So there's you know no reason not to bake it. So we'll just do that. So in position, curvature, thickness, and material ID. And the good thing about the material ID is all of these skulls will be separated out for us, and we'll be able to individually select them if we want. And same with the dirt and the gravestone. So we'll be able to make really clean masks out of them. And down here tangent space, uh, we're gonna leave all these off. Um, so it says, and the tooltip tells you which ones you need on or off depending on what you're doing. And let's say we're just going to Unity, so we're gonna keep both of them off. And our output tangent space is gonna be OpenGL, which is good to know. So when we import into Substance Painter, it's gonna ask us which, which one we want, OpenGL DirectX, so we'll know. And that's it. So now we're ready to go ahead and create this mesh. So I'm gonna go back to the remesh tab, come down to the bottom, select everything, and then remesh selected 
meshes. And this is only going to take a minute here, but you know, all the fun part has been completed. You know, we we did the kit bashing together of some models. We added in a little dirt pile there, and now we're going to be ready to go texturing. And you know, from past experiences, if I had something like this, uh, you know, maybe I would remesh the skull once and retopo that skull by myself, by hand, retopo that skull to the uh, lowest I could make it, and then I'd populate all those together. Uh, but here, what we're going to be able to do is just remesh everything all at once, and and it's going to unwrap it and it's going to do everything. So what may have taken me half a day or a day to remesh and UV this thing and then bake all the textures uh, is going to happen. It's happening right here and is almost done. So right at about 77% now. So you can also see that we can click around and do everything. And we are also at a 1.6 million polygons for this whole kit bash. And we're going and taking it down to 6,000 triangles. And we're going to see what that looks like. And again, in this time frame, we are uh, remeshing this entire asset, UV unwrapping the entire asset, and then baking all of those textures we selected. So a lot is happening in this short period of time uh, with Instalod creating our real-time ready asset. So all the fun, all the fun parts are, are being uh, preserved for us to, to do, you know, high poly modeling, doing the creative part of things and all of the uh, boring, uh, mindless kind of grunt work of retopology and UVs and baking is, is being all done for us at the click of a button. So almost ready here. And now we're completed and everything's baked out. So I'm going to pull this off to the side and we'll isolate it. And you can see, there we go. We have an entire asset all created uh, at right under 6,000. So right at 6,000 triangles. Uh, the We have nothing hidden up under here. And part of that is because I put the little dirt pile in there to fill in the gaps. Um, if I didn't have the dirt pile, some of the, the interior of the skulls would get pulled in. So uh, filling in those gaps is uh, is good to do if you if you have assets that have a lot of holes in them. So you can even see right in the skull, this open mouth that even uh, remesh that really well right around the teeth and into the into the mouth there and all the eye sockets. So really well done here. And if I turn off the textures, you can see uh, very, very clean here. And everything's looking pretty good. And again, we finished this in 99 seconds. Um, so all of that, baking the textures, remeshing this thing and unwrapping it all done in, in 99 seconds there. So now we're ready to take this over to Substance Painter. And first thing to do to, to export this out to Substance Painter is select it. And actually, I'm first going to put it back to zero, zero. Select this, file, export selection, and export to the folder we want. And I'll just call this real-time ready underscore SP for Substance Painter. And what we need to export out are our tangents and binormals here. Uh, because everything was done for us and baked in. So we'll go ahead and export selection. And that's all done. And now we can hop over to Painter. Now that we're in Substance Painter, we can just import the model file and the texture maps that we baked out with Insulod. So I'm going to go to File, New. Go ahead and select my, my real-time ready SP file, which is the gravestone and skulls. Going to tell it that it's OpenGL 2048 and select all the maps that we baked out with Instalon. Go ahead and hit OK. Now we have our model in here, looking good for our low poly. And then we can apply all of our maps. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here to the normal map and go ahead and select each one of my maps. And then we'll take a look at these individually. And it's taking a second to update for some reason, but it should look good as soon as I click on the screen. There we go. So everything's looking good. All the normals are baking. Everything is looking good, just like we saw inside of Maya. So now let's take a look at our maps individually so you can see them on the model. And I like to do this by looking at the base color mode, applying a fill layer, and just dragging maps onto the base color. And we can see here's just the ambient occlusion. 
are high poly textures, which was the photogrammetry of the gravestone, and then the flat material colors that were on the dirt and the skulls. And then we have our curvature and our color ID map. And again, our color ID map was every single high poly object got its own unique color. And these ones look pretty close, but they are slightly different. So just look, I can still individually select the stone versus the ground, but, um, and then we've got our normal map, our world space normal map, and there we go, our position, and finally our thickness. And this is a pretty cool looking thickness map, especially down on these skulls. That could be a pretty neat texture to use. So uh, I've already created um, some smart materials with a full setup. So let's just take a look at the model uh, in its final state. So we've got some stone, the bones, and finally the weathering. And these are all procedural, just using the maps that we've created, no hand painting stuff. So just using that as curvature and ambient occlusion and the world space normal to apply all these textures. So everything's looking pretty good in here. Very quick to apply all these textures and put them on here. Just a couple things to note is because of the UVs being auto-generated, um, we will wanna make sure that everything we do is triplanar and that covers up any kind of texture seams from seams coming down through, you know, say the center of this uh, gravestone or you know the down the center of the, the skull or anything like that. So the triplanar covers all that up, fixes it, and makes it seamless. So this is an entire walkthrough from high poly kit bash to final um, in-game asset with texturing and a 6,000 uh, triangle asset for an environment. Thank you